Hi, I'm Nancy Love. I call myself the Planet Peace Woman. And I want to make this distinction because I am not the pizza guy, I am not the Vegas girl, and I'm not the lottery lady. I am Planet Peace Woman. What I mean by this is that I've seen some of the most absurdly facetious, ridiculous crowd funds online in the last several years. There was a guy who had a bad day at work. He was a pizza delivery guy. And apparently he delivered a pizza, he was given a tip, and then by the time he got back to home base, he, uh, somebody had called his boss and said that they really didn't mean to give him a tip, but he had stolen the um, change he was supposed to give the customer. So the boss made him take the $25 tip back. Well, who hasn't had a bad day at work? I used to do corporate sales and was cheated out of many commissions by a millionaire son of a millionaire son of a millionaire or a couple who had beautiful homes and two retail outlets. I've had bad days at work too as a self-employed person with my own clients and contracts and as a middle manager, general manager, or top salesperson or marketing and sales rep for other corporations. If you've worked, you've had a bad day at work, come on. Well, somebody started a crowdfund for this guy and strangers contributed $31,000 to this poor guy who had a bad day at work. Oh, excuse me. What really got to me was that there was never a thank you. He never said that he was going to donate part of the money to some charity. There was never a response from this person for whom strangers raised $31,000 simply because he was cheated out of twenty-five. If somebody raised $31,000 for me because I had a bad day at work and lost $25, the very first words out of my mouth would be that I was going to tithe or pay forward at least 10% of it. I would have given it to children or animal rescue or I would have done something for someone else and I darn sure would have said thank you. But this guy never did anything. He just took the money and who knows what. You know, who knows, who knows what else. So, I am not the pizza guy. There was another crowdfund that I thought was absurdly ridiculous. This woman who was a waitress in an exotic dancing bar, and we know what goes on there. Um, just some waitress who wanted to go to Las Vegas and quote, party. And her entire crowdfund existed of this. A photograph of her in a sort of low-cut blouse and a one sentence question. It said, I want to go to Vegas and party. Are you going to help me or not? N-A-W. Now I'm a professional writer and it kind of bothered me that this woman couldn't even be bothered to spell not right. But her question that she wanted to go to Vegas and were we going to help her or not raised more than $1,700 the last time I saw the crowdfund. Who cares if some waitress gets to go to Vegas and party or not? Nah? I don't. But apparently total strangers thought it was so important that they gathered together $1,700 for this thing. And then, so I'm not the Vegas girl. Then there was a, a, a crowdfund so bad it actually got shut down. Some woman admitted to having spent all of her money on lottery tickets, which lost, and most lottery tickets will, and then she couldn't afford to pay her rent or buy food for her children. Well, so many people complained, myself included, that her crowdfund actually got thrown off the site, and, uh, but not before, not before total strangers raised more than $800 for her. So, I'm not the lottery loser either. What I am is Planet Peace Woman. Now, crowdfunds have to be um, categorized, at least at Ucaring, which I've used. And Ucaring is a wonderful site because, unlike most of the others, they don't even take a percentage. All of the proceeds go to you and your project 
unless uh, someone who's volunteering some money wants to volunteer some money to you caring. It's a privately funded site by anonymous patrons and they don't even want they don't even demand that they they get a percentage of the contributions. They will um, just immediately release all the, the uh, contributions to the person creating the crowdfund. But my, my specific crowdfund is kind of hard to categorize because it is both an emergency and a service organization startup. I'm not yet a nonprofit so I can't put it in the nonprofit category, but I am in an emergency. In the last couple of years, I have had some extremely severe injuries. Uh, one was that my skull was fractured in what the doctor said was too many places to count. Eye, orbit, temple, fortunately I didn't get temporomandibular joint damage, but 25% or more of my teeth were actually killed. The roots were killed, one shattered. I have a crushed sinus and I have a number of injuries that are still causing numbness and pain in my face. I have a cleft cheekbone, you see it. I have a broken cheekbone that never did get repaired. And after almost two years, I still can't even feel this part of my face. This is all still numb and my teeth have yet to be repaired and I still haven't been able to get my cheekbone fixed or anything. And it's it hurts and it affects the way I perceive the world. Um, I also received some other injuries about six months later which caused me to lose my ability to walk. I can no longer even stand up. I cannot stand up. I cannot take so much as one step. And I need a wheelchair. I also need to move. I have five cats and I'll show you one now. Here is one cat, a beautiful huge creature who is called a golden Akasha love. Rescued him in Koreatown in Los Angeles several years ago and he's been one of the brightest spots in my world. He sleeps next to my head. So every morning in spite of what I'm going through I wake up smiling. And I know that I'm loved and that he is. I have four other cats, uh, Russian Blues, and one called the Midnight Blue. But I've got five rescue cats. We need to move immediately. I'm in Los Angeles. I do not have an adequate income as a freelance writer who can't go out anymore and meet clients. Generally, I've worked from home as a freelance writer and at times have made a decent living and could pay bills. But if you can't even go out and meet clients, you don't get new clients. You don't get new work if you can't go in and initially shake their hands and meet them face to face. So, I need help right now because I need to get my cats and myself moved out of a very bad situation. And we need to do that right now. At a time when I can't stand up, walk, have no car or truck or any kind of vehicle that I could uh, drive even if I still had a car I couldn't drive because my knees will not straighten my pelvis femur knees are all damaged my calf muscles are atrophied and before that I had a dislocated ankle I have heart issues and um, kind of physically I'm a bit of a train wreck but I still have one good arm my left shoulder is frozen or encapsulated and it's painful constantly and my left arm has become weak but I can still type with my left hand I have limited range of motion and I'm in constant pain if you've ever had an encapsulated or frozen so shoulder you know what I'm talking about but, so out of two arms and two legs three of them don't work only one works well and perfectly without pain but I can still type and I can still work and I can still think and I can still love and I can still have what I call a passion for compassion so at a time in my life when I'm horribly physically challenged I need to move but I can't walk and I don't have the funds to do it 
or any kind of transportation. I don't even have a wheelchair. And yes, that means I'm crawling on my hands and knees. I'm crawling on my hands and knees. So when I say, if you people in the world could raise $31,000 for somebody who had a bad day at work, if you people could raise $1,700 for some idiot who wanted to go party at Vegas or not, and if you could raise $800 for some complete fool who wasted her rent and food money on lottery tickets even though she had children to support, perhaps you could actually come forward and do something for someone who has decency, maturity, wisdom, and love. What I'm trying to do with the Planet Peace Project, and the reason I call myself Planet Peace Woman, is because if you'll go to Planet Peace, uh, www.planetpeace.love, you'll see a beautiful website that describes the program. For years I've wanted to start a nonprofit that deals with education and micro-peace that blends areas uh, of many disciplines, spirituality, science, um, specifically behavioral medicine. I learned a lot in psychology and behavioral health classes when I was in college about how to be peaceful in a warlike world, how to have impulse control even when you've been assaulted or angered or treated horribly, how to rise above a situation that is so despicable that it should bring out the best in anyone but can't bring out the worst, can't, that it would bring out the worst in anyone, but can't bring out the worst in you. How to have integrity when everyone around you is a scumbag. How to be someone who rises above what I call the level of the aggressors. And how to be a peaceful person when other people are stupid and warlike and inferior. How to be a truly superior human being in a world that challenges your wisdom and your righteousness and your decency every day and seems to be actively trying to make you as evil and stupid and as scumbaggy, scumbaggy if that's a word, as everyone else around you. How to rise above all that and be better than your circumstances. That's micro peace. The second aspect of planet peace is mediation. I would like to, at some point, be financially well off enough to send mediators who have already volunteered. I've got the mediators lined up. I just don't have any kind of financial support or basis t to do this yet. But I would like to be able to send mediators to war-torn and conflict-ridden parts of the planet and try to get these people to help the locals to talk through their problems rather than shoot their way through their problems. We are, in theory at least, an intelligent species, and yet we spend more than 20% of our world's resources on ways to kill each other more efficiently. Militaries take up at least a fifth of our, re of our resources globally, and I think that's probably a tragic uh, statistic, certainly, but quite an underestimation as well. It may be about half. So if we're such a smart species, why are we spending so much of our resources, time, and effort, and intelligence on figuring out better ways to blow each other sky high? We should be figuring out better ways to be able to get along with each other, shake hands, and start creating the beautiful world that we could if we were truly an intelligent form of life on this planet. The third aspect of planet peace involves advocacy and in, in the encouragement of volunteerism. Uh, I'm an animal advocate, I'm a child welfare advocate, I'm a human rights advocate, and I'm an environmentalist. I would like to encourage people to volunteer in any of these fields and I would also like to encourage advocates, um, people to write for Amnesty International or any kind of, I'm sorry, but cat fur, cat fur on my face, go figure. Can I come over here? Okay, just don't knock everything down. Cat coming through. 
Um, so anyway, <laughs> like I said, I am an animal rescuer and they take precedence over everything including YouTube videos. So I would like to see young people in particular do more volunteer work. It seems to me like in the last couple of decades we're raising groups and hordes of children who are extremely self-interested and who need to have some wisdom instilled in them. Young people need to realize that you're not on this planet for yourself alone. That we're all in this together. And in the olden days, we all knew something called the family of man. Yes, the family of man. That other people, no matter what they look like, whether they look like you or don't look one darn thing like you, are your sisters and your brothers. And yes, you are your brother's keeper. Yes, you are responsible for children starving to death on the other side of the world or perhaps in your own neighborhood or your own community. Yes, you are responsible for stopping animal abuse when you see your neighbor raise a hand against his cat or dog. Yes, you are responsible for child neglect. Yes, you are responsible for reporting things like pedophilia and child abuse and domestic violence and gang activity. Yes, you are responsible for supporting your local law enforcement agencies and also exposing corruption when you find it in your law, local law enforcement agencies. You are responsible for helping heal the entire world. And if each of us accepted that responsibility and shouldered that burden, it would be a significantly lighter burden for those of us who acknowledge this. Immanuel Kant K-A-N-T, the great philosopher, said was, he had written thousands upon thousands of words in his life and that he himself called one thing his maxim imperative. Immanuel Kant, one of the greatest philosophers of all time, who'd written tens of thousands of words, said the single most important thing he had ever written, thought, or tried to consider as advice and counsel for the rest of us through history and through time could be stated in one sentence and that is this the maximum the maxim imperative rather is as follows behave in such a way that if every human being on this planet followed your example it would be a beautiful world and if you really internalize that and you really start walking the walk and talking the talk of someone whose behavior is so exemplary that it could be a shining role model for everybody else on this planet and that if they followed your example it would be a beautiful world then you have finally made it to the level of wisdom and intelligence that we actually need from other human beings on this planet this time. It is time people. It is time to evolve into the next evolution of humankind. There was Cro-Magnon, then there was Neanderthal, I mean sorry, there was uh, Paleolithic Man, then there was Neanderthal, then there was Cro-Magnon, then there was Homo sapiens. It is time to get to Homo spiritus. It is time we as a species consciously, willfully evolved into the next evolution of our species which has been already named as Homo spiritus. And that will be a a being of a level of spiritual, environmental, ecological, and social wisdom that is truly exemplary, truly superior to what we've seen out of Homo sapiens in the last several thousand years. But we're going to have to do it on purpose because this planet is not going to survive much more of the behavior of mere Homo sapiens. We have managed, as the only species who could have, to destroy the ecosystem and the eco-balance of an entire planet and that is a shame that is a shame for which we must pay and it is a shame that we must correct it is time that we throw out of office and out of control anyone who doesn't have the intelligence and the intelligence and the scientific knowledge to understand something called the greenhouse effect if somebody doesn't comprehend climate change and humanity's uh, contribution to climate change, then throw the bum out. 
because that's too stupid to rule. That's what I call hashtag too stupid to rule. Get him out of here. I don't have any patience for anybody who thinks that human humanity hasn't changed the climate. Of course we have. Have you ever heard of carbon dioxide? Have you ever sat in a in a hot car on a hot day with the windows rolled up and started sweating and feeling bad and thought, hmm, I could get hyperthermia again in here. I think this is what the planet's going through because we put so much carbon dioxide as well as other uh, pollutants, primary, secondary, and tertiary pollutants. A tertiary pollutant is something that if you send one chemical up in the air and then you send a second chemical up in the air and uh, while up in the air they blend into some third chemical, that's a whole third chemical that, that you're directly and personally as a species responsible for putting in the air, although you didn't create it and generate it and put it there to begin with. Hey, don't get me started. Sometimes I don't call myself Planet Peace Roman. Some, sometimes I call na myself Nancy Massive Outrage Love. So Planet Peace Woman is the nicest thing I can be calling myself at this point. Oh look, it's 2017 and people still argue about whether we're, we cause climate change. Duh! Get over it. Get a brain. Come on. So, we need advocates. We need volunteers. We need people who are capable of helping this planet survive. I'm not the lottery loser. I am not the Vegas girl who wants to party or not. Nah. And I'm darn sure not some guy who's so fortunate that because he had a bad day at work and lost $25, a bunch of total strangers got together and raised $31,000 for him. The fourth component of Planet Peace is celebration. And I do think that we should have picnics, we should have a world party on probably on Peace Day, which is in the third week of September of uh, every year. We can all gather around the concept of peace. We can try to forgive each other our, our um, problems. We can try to get well. We can come together around the concept of peace, around the idea that, it, that human beings are even capable of peace. And if one more man, and why is it always a man who says, well, how do they put it? Well, I don't believe in peace. As long as you have men, there will always be war. Well, then we're going to have to get rid of those specific men who believe that. If you're a man, or it's never happened to me, but if there's a woman out there who believes that as long as there are men on this planet there will always be war then get off the planet we don't have room we don't have time for people who don't even believe in the concept of peace if you can't gather your wits and thoughts around the idea that human beings might actually at some point on this world get along with each other in mass then get off the planet get Elon Musk to send you to Mars you're welcome to colonize Mars because there's probably not as much life up there for you to hurt but you are hurting every single one of us if you are failing to believe in even the possibility of peace years ago I made a statement that caused Gene Roddenberry's wife and family to fall in love with me long before we met I sent this off an email to Major Roddenberry and um, Rod Roddenberry and some of the other family members of Gene Roddenberry the gentleman who started Star Trek years ago and she and several other other of their family members said they just fell in love with me over this one sentence in my letters I said only those who believe in the possibility of an enlightened and egalitarian future are equipped to help create it. Only those who believe in the possibility of an enlightened and egalitarian future are equipped to help create it. Hopefully you've now fallen in love <laughs> with the idea of the Planet Peace Project. If not its founder and hopefully you are willing now to to jog loose some energy. Please share this. If you see a meme on a, you know a segment on Twitter, retweet this. If you see this on Facebook or Instagram or any of the other social media, 
share it. <clears throat> if you're in a position to contribute to the Planet Peace Project or and or to my personal welfare right now at a time when I can't even stand up or walk and I need an actual home and I need a vehicle that I can drive with my hands and I need surgery on my legs and I need surgery on my skull and I need medical care that I haven't been getting. If you want to help me at a time when I sit around and try to rescue animals all over the world and try to advocate for people who are suffering in Syria and Sierra Leone and trying to help hurricane victims in Texas, Florida, and Puerto Rico, I'm trying to help everyone I can, whether they're animal or human animal. And I need people to start actually helping me. I know I'm not the, the, the lottery loser. I'm not someone so stupid I spent all my money on lottery tickets. I'm not someone so foolish and vain and greedy that I expect strangers to help me go party in Vegas or not. And I'm not some pizza delivery guy who lost $25 and ended up with, with $31,000 instead. I am someone who actually deserves your help. I have tried to help all kinds of animals and all kinds of people all of my life. And I'm not getting any younger. And as of the last couple of years, I'm not getting any healthier or stronger. I'm basically crawling around on my hands and knees with one good arm and one good brain and one really, really good heart. So if you want to do something important with your money, then contribute it to this crowdfund. Because I'm dying here. And that should not be.